In this video, I'm going to show you how to add Google Tag Manager to your website without using any plugins. I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. This is part of my plugin killer series where we are essentially taking plugins and not needing them anymore, replacing them with simple pieces of code or other simple processes. And Google Tag Manager is so powerful because we add two pieces of code that Google Tag Manager gives us. And then through that, we can add tons and tons of other code that we'd only be adding using plugins and things like that, like Google Analytics, Facebook Pixels, Google ad tracking pixels, whatever kind of script, whatever website needs you to add, whatever service needs you to add to your site, you can add with Google Tag Manager in a WYSIWYG editor, making it super easy. Don't have to mess with code, just mess with code just this once, and you can replace a whole horde of plugins by doing this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from the WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is get a Google Tag Manager account. We're going to do it at this URL right here. It's linked to in the description down below if you don't want to type that out. And once we're here, click on Sign in the Tag Manager. You do have to have a Google account to make this work. This could be a, a Gmail account if you have one already. This will be linked to your Gmail or you can create a new Google account if you want to, to keep things separate. I'm gonna click on sign in because I have a whole bunch of Google accounts already. I'm gonna pick the one I wanna add it to and actually auto sign me in to one of my accounts. This is the account that has my WP Learning Lab container for Google Tag Manager. When you come in here, this will just be blank. You will click create account, put a name in here. I'm gonna call this clients because I'm gonna pretend this is for client sites. It's not really, just gonna pretend. For the country, choose the one that's appropriate for you. I'm gonna choose Canada. You can just keep it on US as well. I don't think it really matters. For the container, I'm gonna put in the name of the website. This is for my own reference, so I know which site this belongs to, wpspeedify.com. And I'm gonna choose web because this is a website. You also have the option of using this on iOS apps, Android apps, AMP pages, server-side implementations. The setup for those are all very different. We're going to use web because that's what we're using. Check that. Click on create. Agree to the terms. Click on yes. And now you should have your first Google Tag Manager account. It's that easy. We have to put these two tags, these two pieces of code onto our website. This one as high as possible in the head section of the site. This one immediately after the opening body tag. And I'm going to show you two different ways to add this to your site and neither of them use a plugin, but they both use a child theme. You don't have to use a child theme for both of them. You can use the code I show you and put that into a parent theme if you want, but make it overwritten when the parent theme is updated. So I recommend you use a child theme. So the first one puts the code in the functions file. The second one put them right into the template file for the header of the child theme. I'll show you how all that works. So first let's look at the website we're working on. This is the one we want to add it to, wpspeedify.com. If I view the source and I look for Google Tag Manager or just search for GTM, it's GT Metrics, that's not it. All we see is GT Metrics. There is no mention of Google Tag Manager because it's not there. Just want to prove to you it's not there. And we are going to use the code from this blog post. I've linked to this down below as well. And I've linked to this video, which I released last week, I think. And that will show you more implementations of this code. But basically what it does is we add this code to our functions file. And then within the code, it says here your JavaScript code goes below. We put it right here. And that will be the Google Tag Manager code that goes in right there. We put that right into the functions file. And then that will be live on our website. To get to our functions file, we're going to go into our hosting account. This is the new layout of the SiteGround website list. I'm going to scroll down WP Speedify. I'm going to click on Site Tools. Then I will click on Site and File Manager. You can also do this via FTP if you're more comfortable with that. I'm going to go to public underscore HTML, WP Content, Themes, and we have our OceanWP parent theme and our OceanWP child theme. The child theme is the one that's active. If you don't know which theme is active on your site, you just go into the dashboard, go to appearance and themes, and the one on the top left here is the one that's active, and it's WP Child. And so we are going to open that. And the functions file right here is where we're going to put that code. So I'm going to click on that, click on edit, and I'm going to put the code right in here. So I'm just going to come back to the blog post, copy this. This will put it in the head section. 
paste that right in there, and then go to Google Tag Manager, get the code that's supposed to go in the head section, copy that, and paste that right there. And that's done. That piece of code is now in the head section of our website once we save this file. The next piece of code needs to go in the body section. So we're gonna go back to the blog post, I'm going to click on this link where it shows other places where we can place the code using WordPress hooks. Click on that. It shows that we have a hook called WP underscore body underscore open. And that will allow, or that will put the code right at the beginning of the body element, which is what we want. So let's copy this. I'm going to copy a whole bunch of stuff. Let's copy this first, actually. The same code we had before. I'm going to put that into here. right there. And we are going to then copy this and replace WP underscore head with what we just copied. Let's move those brackets. And then we're going to get the Google Tag Manager code. The second one, copy that, throw it in there. And we have all the code that we need in here. But before we save it, we're going to change the name of our two functions because currently they have the same name my underscore JavaScript underscore code is the name of the function. And it's the name of this function too. That's gonna to cause a problem. I'm gonna rename them both so they more clearly describe what they're doing. This first one is the GTM header code. Copy that and paste that here. So the add action is connected to this function. And then we also have our function here connected to this add action. I'm gonna call this one GTM footer code. They're both unique now. There we go. Now save it, and now come up back to the website, refresh, website loads, nothing's broken, so that works. Go to view page source, let's look up GTM, and here we have our first Google Tag Manager code, and then if we scroll down, we have the second Google Tag Manager code right here. So that's the first way to add the code with the functions file. Now I'm gonna go back into the functions file, and delete what we added to show you the second way to add a Google Tag Manager code. Make sure you get rid of everything you added or just don't add it that way. Use the second way if you want. We go to the themes folder, the WP child folder, which we're currently using. I recommend you do this in the child theme because we are going to go to the parent theme and we're going to take the header file. We're going to copy it. And where did it copy it to? We're going to just paste it right in here. Paste it right there. Yeah, that worked. So we copied the header file from the parent folder to the child theme folder. This is the header file. And according to the WordPress hierarchy, it will look for the header file and the child theme first, and it will load that if it exists. If it doesn't exist, it will just load the header file from the parent theme. And if you make updates to your parent theme via regular theme updates, then your work won't be overwritten. That's why we use child themes. I have a tutorial on whether or not you need a child theme. Link to in the card up above or the description down below. And I also have a tutorial about the WordPress hierarchy that shows you the file relationship and which files are loaded first in which circumstances so you can better understand how WordPress creates websites. So this header file in the child theme, I'm going to click on it and I want to open it. Let's double click it. And here is the header file. And we can place the Google Tag Manager code much better here. It will see the one we added before this was supposed to go immediately after the body tag, and it exists after this code, not immediately after the body tag. And the other one is supposed to go as high as possible in the head tag, but we're not. High as possible is way up here. Now, if we go through this method with the child theme, we can place them more properly. So let's copy our header code, paste it right after the head paste it right there. And let's copy the footer code. And let's paste it right after the body tag. Right there. Save that. We don't need to mess with any functions or any PHP or anything. Just copy and paste them just like that. Come back out here, refresh, everything should still be working. It still works. Refresh the source code. And we see the code is now right after the head tag, which is right where we want it. And the second piece of code is the first thing after the body tag, which is also right where we want it. And we can check to make sure this works with Google Tag Manager. The first thing we want to do, though, is save it. 
and submit it. What Google Tag Manager has is something called version control. So every time you make a change, you submit the change, you add information about the change, and then you can see all the changes that have been made with timestamps, and you can revert back to older changes if something goes wrong or older versions. I'm going to click on Submit. I'm going to call this Initializing GTM, and I'm going to click on Publish. And there we have it. This is our first one installed. There's no tags, no triggers, just five variables, which are the ones that are built in, they're listed down here. We didn't actually add those, so those are just added by GTM. If you click on versions, we see all the versions we have. This is the very first version. And now if I click on workspace and then preview in the top right, we enter the URL we're previewing, click on start. We're connecting to the site, opens a new, new tab, and down the bottom here, it says debugger connected, which means it worked, it's connected. And you might have a debug bar that you have visible down here, or in my case, the information is viewable in the tag assistant, which is a Chrome add-on that you see right up here. If I click on enable and then refresh the page and it shows Google Tag Manager installed and that's what we want to see right here. And if there's any problems, you'll really see that here too. And if Google Tag Manager has any tags inside of its container, the container just being this overall account ID here that we set up at the beginning of the video. And if you have any tags added like Google Analytics or Facebook Pixels or Google Ad Tracking Code or whatever else through Google Tag Manager, it'll be listed here and you'll be able to see that it's firing on this page. And the reason Google Tag Manager was created was that now we have this one code installed on our site, we can install all the tags and all the triggers for those tags inside Google Tag Manager, which allows you a lot of flexibility and more of a point and click WYSIWYG editor instead of dealing with code. An example of something really powerful you can do is you could have Google Tag Manager install Google Analytics on your site and then you can have it so if someone clicks this request a quote button, it fires an event in Google Analytics that you can see in your Google Analytics. So you can see how many people visit this page. You can see how many people click this. From that, you get your click-through rate. From that, you can determine if this call to action is doing what it should be for your business. And that's just one example of something powerful you can do. For the Facebook pixels or for the Google ad, ad pixels that fire when somebody buys something, you can have those set to appear only on specific pages if you need to do that. That is something for a future video. Now that we have the Tag Manager container installed, we can add those things and customize their triggers. And this debug add-on right here, this is a Google Chrome add-on, like I mentioned. If you want to get it, go to Chrome extensions or search for Chrome extensions. Go to the Chrome Web Store, look up Google Tag Manager. It's this guy right here, click on that. Click on install on Chrome. It'll take a few seconds to install and then you can verify that the Google tag was installed properly on your site, which you can see by this turning green, has a little one there for only one tag manager container, which is what you wanna see. And this is what you should be seeing if it worked. If it didn't work, this will show nothing, or it'll be in red. Then you have to go back, follow the steps in this video again to make sure you did all the steps correctly. Next up is checking out the Plugin Killer Series playlist right here so you can remove more plugins from your site. It's a great thing to do, speeds up your site, makes it more secure, makes you have less work doing all the updates all the time. So check out that playlist. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to click subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And until next time, keep crushing it and I'll see you in the next video.